The slow knock on the door late at night was quite odd. Who was that at this late hour? In the forest, where my cozy cabin nestled among the tall pines, such visitors were a rarity. It was a chilly autumn night, and I had just settled down to read a good book by the crackling fire. The knock sounded again, a hesitant rap, echoing through the stillness of the woods. I set my book down, furrowing my brow. My nearest neighbor was miles away, and I wasn't expecting anyone. My faithful old dog, Max, roused from his slumber and growled low in his throat. I approached the door cautiously, my heart quickening. When I opened it, I was met with darkness. The only source of illumination was the pale moonlight filtering through the dense canopy above. There, standing on my doorstep, was a young woman. She looked disheveled, her hair tangled and her clothing muddied. Can I help you? I asked, trying to keep my voice steady, despite the unease that had settled in my chest. She didn't answer immediately. Instead, she stared at me with wide, fearful eyes. It was as if she'd been running from something terrible. Finally, she stammered, Please, you have to let me in. They're after me. I hesitated for a moment, torn between my instinct to help and the fear of inviting trouble into my home. The forest held its secrets, and I had heard stories of strange happenings in these woods. But compassion won out, and I stepped aside, allowing the girl to enter. Max continued to growl lowly, his hackles raised. She quickly stepped inside, and I locked the door behind her. She took a few deep breaths, attempting to calm herself. Thank you, she said, her voice shaking. I don't know what I would have done if you hadn't opened the door. I couldn't help but notice the fear etched on her face, the way her hands trembled. You look like you've been through something, I remarked. She nodded, tears glistening in her eyes. I was camping with my friends and something happened. We heard strange noises in the woods, and then they were gone. My friends, they just disappeared, and I ran as fast as I could. I offered her a warm blanket and a cup of tea to help calm her nerves. As she sipped the tea, she began to explain what had transpired earlier that evening. It seemed like an ordinary camping trip until they had set up their campfire, and the forest had come alive with eerie sounds. The wind carried whispers, she said, her voice barely above a whisper. We heard footsteps, but there was no one there. It was like the trees themselves were watching us. I felt a shiver run down my spine. The forest could be a mysterious and unsettling place, but what she described sounded otherworldly. And then, I prompted. She took a deep breath. We heard a mournful cry, something that sounded like a wounded animal. But when we looked around, we saw it, a figure, a shadowy silhouette, moving through the trees. We panicked, and that's when my friends disappeared. They were there one moment, and the next, gone. I listened, my heart heavy with dread. You're safe now, I assured her, though I couldn't deny that her story sent a chill down my spine. Max, sensing my unease, kept a vigilant watch over our unexpected guest. As the night wore on, we talked. Her name was Sarah, and she was a college student on a camping trip with her friends. They had chosen my cabin's vicinity because of the rumors and legends about the mysterious happenings in these woods, but nothing could have prepared them for what they had encountered. The minutes turned into hours, and Sarah finally seemed to relax. It was well past midnight when she mentioned that she was exhausted. I offered her the guest bedroom, and she gratefully accepted. Max and I settled in for the night, though my sleep was fitful, filled with strange dreams. Morning broke, and I awoke to find Sarah already up. She was standing by the window, gazing out at the forest. It's a beautiful morning, she said, her tone no longer tinged with fear. I nodded, though I couldn't help but wonder if her friends were safe. Have you thought about what you'll do next? She turned to me, her expression determined. I need to find my friends, see if they're okay. We can't leave them out there. I agreed, and together, we decided to head out and retrace her steps to the campsite. As we walked deeper into the forest, we kept an eye out for any signs of her friends. The trees whispered, and the wind rustled the leaves, but there was an eerie silence that hung heavy in the air. We reached the campsite, and what we found was nothing short of surreal. The tents were torn, the campfire reduced to smoldering embers, but there was no sign of Sarah's friends. It was as if they had vanished into thin air. Desperation gnawed at Sarah. She called out their names, 
but her voice echoed through the stillness, unanswered. Max, usually boisterous and energetic, cowered by my side, as if he sensed the sinister aura that enveloped us. We spent hours searching, our anxiety mounting with each passing moment, but there was no trace of the missing campers. It was a chilling mystery, one that defied all logic. As the sun began to dip below the horizon, we reluctantly decided to return to the cabin. Sarah was inconsolable. She had come here with her friends to enjoy the beauty of the forest, and now she was faced with a nightmare that defied explanation. What do we do now? She asked, her voice trembling. I comforted her as best as I could, and we discussed our options. It was clear that we needed help, and I suggested contacting the local authorities. With a heavy heart, Sarah agreed, and I made the call. It didn't take long for the authorities to arrive, and they began their own search of the area. I could see the concern in their eyes as they scored the forest, but still, there was no sign of Sarah's friends. Days turned into weeks, and the search continued. The mystery of the disappearing campers haunted the small community, and theories abounded. Some believed it was the work of a rogue animal, while others spoke of more sinister forces at play in the forest. Sarah remained at my cabin, unable to leave the place where she had last seen her friends. I did my best to support her, and we often found solace in each other's company. As the days passed, we grew closer, our shared experience creating a bond that transcended our initial meeting. One evening, as we sat by the fire, Sarah turned to me with a hesitant smile. You know, she said, I don't know what I would have done if you hadn't opened your door that night. I smiled back at her, grateful that I had been there to help. Sometimes fate has a strange way of bringing people together, I replied. As we talked and shared stories, I began to feel a warmth in my heart that went beyond friendship. Sarah's courage and resilience had captured my admiration, and the time we spent together had deepened the connection between us. The more we got to know each other, the more I realized how much we had in common. It was as though the forest, with all its enigmatic secrets, had orchestrated our meeting. Weeks turned into months, and the search for Sarah's friends eventually dwindled. The local authorities couldn't find any trace of them, and the community gradually moved on, albeit with a lingering sense of unease. Sarah and I, however, couldn't let go. We knew in our hearts that there was more to the story, and we were determined to uncover the truth. One day, Sarah approached me with a newfound determination in her eyes. We can't rely on the authorities anymore, she said. We have to figure out what happened to ourselves. I can't live with not knowing what happened to my friends. I agreed, and together we delved deeper into the mysteries of the forest. We consulted local legends and folklore, hoping to find a clue, anything that might lead us to the truth. The more we learned, the more we realized that the forest held many secrets, and the disappearances of her friends were not isolated incidents. Whispers of a hidden world within the woods, a realm of spirits and ancient powers, filled our conversations. We discovered tales of people who had ventured into the forest and returned changed or not at all. There were stories of eerie lights, mysterious voices, and sightings of shadowy figures that defied explanation. Some believed that the forest was a place where the veil between our world and another was thin, and that those who crossed over might never return. Armed with this newfound knowledge, Sarah and I embarked on a series of expeditions into the heart of the forest. We carried lanterns and maps, determined to explore every nook and cranny, hoping to uncover the truth about her friends. Max, ever faithful, accompanied us on our journeys, his keen senses always on alert. The forest was a place of enchanting beauty, with ancient trees that seemed to whisper secrets and hidden glades that felt untouched by time. But it was also a place of overwhelming darkness, where the silence was often broken by the eerie calls of unseen creatures. Our journeys were fraught with tension, and the forest's secrets remained elusive. Then, one fateful evening, as we ventured deeper into the woods than ever before, we stumbled upon an overgrown path. It was as if the forest itself had beckoned us to follow it. The path was narrow, barely visible, but we pressed on, driven by an unexplainable force. The path led us to a clearing, and in the center, we found a peculiar circle of stones, each one covered in moss and lichen. It was a site of ancient significance, a place of power. 
Sarah and I exchanged glances, both of us realizing that this was the key to the mystery. We decided to spend the night at the clearing, and as we lit fire, the forest around us came alive with an eerie glow. The shadows danced, and the trees seemed to sway to a rhythm only they could hear. We began to hear voices, whispers that carried secrets from the past, stories of those who had ventured into the forest and never returned. As the night wore on, we felt a presence, an energy that seemed to surround us, and then in the distance, we saw them, the shadowy figures that Sarah had described. They moved through the trees, their forms indistinct, but we could sense their sorrow and longing. These were the spirits of those who had been lost to the forest. The spirits drew nearer, and their voices became more pronounced. They spoke of the forest's ancient power, of the thin veil between worlds, and of the choice they had made to stay in this otherworldly realm. They were not trapped, but had willingly become guardians of the forest, protecting its secrets and ensuring that those who entered were forever changed. My heart ached for Sarah, as we realized that her friends had made the same choice. They were no longer in the world of the living, but they were at peace, embraced by the mystic forces of the forest. It was a bittersweet revelation, one that brought both closure and a deep sense of wonder. As the spirits faded back into the forest, the clearing grew still. Sarah and I sat in silence, our hearts heavy with the knowledge of what had transpired. We had uncovered the truth, but it was not the resolution we had hoped for. In the days that followed, Sarah made the difficult decision to leave the forest behind, to honor the memory of her friends and the experiences they had shared. I supported her choice, though it was a bittersweet farewell. With Sarah's departure, the cabin once again became a place of solitude, and the forest resumed its enigmatic silence. Max and I continued to explore, but the mystery of the forest remained, a reminder of the otherworldly forces that existed just beyond the trees. The forest had given me a gift, a deep connection with Sarah, a glimpse into the mysteries of the world, and a profound respect for the unknown. As the years passed, I continued to live in the cabin, content in the knowledge that the forest held its secrets close, waiting for those who dared to seek the truth. My dream of going to the moon had come true, but nothing would have prepared me for what I would encounter there. As a young astronaut, I had always been fascinated by the cosmos and had dreamed of exploring space since I was a child. Finally, the day had come when I was selected for a mission to the moon. I couldn't believe my luck, and I was filled with excitement as I prepared for this extraordinary journey. The day of the launch was a mix of anxiety and anticipation. Strapped into the spacecraft, I felt the rumble of the engines beneath me. The countdown began, and as the numbers ticked down, I closed my eyes, trying to steady my racing heart. In what felt like a split second, the engines roared to life, and I was propelled into the vast darkness of space. The journey to the moon was both breathtaking and daunting. As I looked out of the window, I could see the Earth shrinking into the distance, a blue and green marble in the sea of stars. The sense of isolation was overwhelming, but my training and the mission itself kept me focused. Upon reaching the moon, I marveled at the desolate gray landscape. It was like stepping into another world entirely. Our mission was to explore the moon's surface, conduct experiments, and gather valuable data for future missions. I stepped onto the lunar surface, taking my first steps with the assistance of my spacesuit. The low gravity made me feel like I was floating. For several days, we conducted our experiments and collected samples. It was lonely, but the moon's beauty was mesmerizing. Each night, I would gaze up at the Earth, shining in the lunar sky like a distant beacon of hope. It was a surreal experience, but I knew that the journey back home would be even more challenging. One evening, as I was collecting rock samples, I noticed something unusual. It was a glint in the distance, an unnatural reflection on the moon's surface. I cautiously approached the area and discovered a metallic object partially buried in the regolith. I couldn't believe my eyes. It was a spacecraft, and it didn't look like any that I'd seen in our records. As I got closer, I noticed strange symbols etched into the side of the craft. They were unlike any language I had ever seen. The surface was cold to the touch, and there was an eerie silence surrounding it. The questions raced through my mind. Who had built this? How did it get here? 
I had no answers, but I knew that I needed to report my discovery to Mission Control. Back at the Lunar Module, I transmitted images and data of the mysterious spacecraft to Mission Control. The excitement in their voices was palpable. They instructed me to carefully document everything and, if possible, to attempt to access the spacecraft. It was a daunting task, but the sense of adventure and curiosity fueled my determination. With the help of my fellow astronaut, we managed to open a small hatch on the craft's side. Inside, we found a dimly lit chamber with a control panel covered in unfamiliar buttons and switches. It was like stepping into a science fiction movie. The atmosphere inside the craft was strange, and we had to rely on our spacesuits to keep us safe. As I approached the control panel, my gloved hand accidentally pressed one of the buttons. Suddenly, the chamber came to life. Lights flickered, and the spacecraft emitted a low, rhythmic hum. My heart raced, and I quickly tried to reverse what I had done, but it was too late. The spacecraft's control panel displayed a holographic star map with coordinates leading to a distant corner of the galaxy. It was as if this craft was designed for interstellar travel. The implications of our discovery were staggering. It was far beyond anything we had anticipated for our moon mission. Our communication with mission control was disrupted, leaving us alone with the mysterious spacecraft. It became clear that our discovery was not a coincidence. Someone or something had left this craft on the moon, and it had been waiting for us to find it. The sense of isolation and vulnerability in the harsh lunar environment was overwhelming. As we contemplated our next steps, we noticed another strange phenomenon. The moon's surface seemed to be shifting and changing. Cracks appeared in the regolith, revealing a hidden labyrinth beneath. It was a maze of tunnels and chambers that seemed to stretch deep into the moon's core. Driven by curiosity and a sense of duty, we descended into the moon's depths. The walls of the tunnels were covered in peculiar markings and symbols, much like those we had seen on the spacecraft. It was a language we couldn't decipher, but it felt ancient and alien. Deeper into the tunnels, we discovered a vast underground chamber. The ceiling was adorned with a mesmerizing display of stars, galaxies, and constellations. It was like standing in the heart of the universe itself. In the center of the chamber, there was a pedestal with a glowing crystal. I approached the crystal cautiously, and as I reached out to touch it, I was engulfed by a blinding light. My senses were overwhelmed, and I felt as though I was being transported through time and space. Images flashed before my eyes, scenes of otherworldly landscapes and civilizations beyond imagination. When the light subsided, I found myself back on the lunar surface, but something had changed. I could no longer see Earth in the sky. Instead, I was surrounded by a field of stars, unlike any I had ever seen. I checked my equipment and realized that I was no longer on the moon. I was somewhere else entirely. As I looked around, I noticed a group of beings approaching me. They were tall and slender, with skin that shimmered like stardust. They communicated with me through a form of telepathy, and their message was clear. They were the ancient caretakers of the universe, the ones who had left the spacecraft and the markings for us to find. They explained that they had been observing Earth for millennia, and had chosen me to be their emissary. They had transported me to a distant corner of the galaxy to witness the wonders and mysteries of the cosmos. They offered me the opportunity to explore the universe alongside them, to learn its secrets and share them with humanity. At first, I was overwhelmed by the enormity of the choice before me. The chance to explore the cosmos with these beings was a dream beyond my wildest imagination. But I also felt a deep sense of duty to my fellow humans on Earth. I couldn't abandon them especially with the knowledge and technology I had gained during this extraordinary journey. With a heavy heart, I declined the offer of the caretakers and expressed my desire to return to Earth. They nodded in understanding and transported me back to the moon, where I was eventually rescued by a passing spacecraft. When I returned to Earth, I shared the incredible story of my journey with the world. It was met with a mix of wonder, skepticism, and awe. The markings, spacecraft, and tunnels on the moon were a subject of intense study and debate among scientists and experts. The experience changed me profoundly, and I felt a sense of responsibility to help humanity reach for the stars in a different way. In the years that followed, I dedicated my life to space exploration and scientific research. 
The mysteries of the universe continued to inspire me, but I never forgot the encounter with the ancient caretakers. I knew that one day, humanity would be ready to join the interstellar community, and I hoped to play a role in making that dream a reality. As I delved deeper into my work, the world watched with bated breath, wondering what other secrets the universe might hold. The moon remained a focal point of exploration, but the discovery of the underground tunnels and the alien spacecraft had shifted the focus from lunar missions to broader cosmic inquiries. The markings and symbols left by the ancient caretakers continued to baffle linguists and archaeologists. They studied these symbols tirelessly, hoping to decipher the messages that lay within. Each day, new revelations and interpretations were proposed, but the true meaning remained elusive. The global scientific community couldn't ignore the undeniable connection between these enigmatic symbols and the technological marvels they had discovered. The prospect of interstellar travel, once relegated to the realms of science fiction, was becoming a tangible goal. Human space exploration accelerated at an unprecedented rate, and collaboration among nations reached new heights. Humanity's collective knowledge grew as we learned more about the universe's mysteries. New propulsion technologies were developed, and our understanding of interstellar travel deepened. We set our sights on exploring other celestial bodies in our solar system and beyond. As we embarked on missions to Mars, Europa, and the outer reaches of our solar system, the mysteries of the universe continued to reveal themselves. We discovered evidence of microbial life on Mars, confirming the possibility of extraterrestrial life. The ice-covered oceans of Europa held secrets that tantalized scientists, while the gas giants and their many moons became the next frontier for exploration. With each mission, we uncovered more clues about the caretakers and their ancient knowledge. The markings found on the moon were mirrored on other celestial bodies, suggesting a universal language of cosmic significance. Scientists continued to collaborate with linguists, historians, and experts from various fields to unlock the secrets hidden within these symbols. Years turned into decades, and our quest for understanding the universe became a shared endeavor. Our collective knowledge expanded, and our technological prowess evolved. The once distant dream of interstellar travel was now a reality, and we launched our first missions to other star systems. Our spacecraft, armed with the knowledge and technology imparted to me by the caretakers, traveled vast distances, exploring exoplanets and searching for signs of intelligent life. The ancient beings' guidance had opened doors to new horizons, transforming humanity's understanding of the universe and our place within it. However, as we ventured deeper into the cosmos, we faced challenges and questions that tested the limits of our knowledge. The caretakers had given us a gift but they had also issued a challenge to seek knowledge, to explore, and to discover the mysteries of the universe. As we journeyed beyond our solar system, we encountered civilizations older and more advanced than our own. These interactions taught us valuable lessons in humility and the complexities of interstellar diplomacy. We strive to be good stewards of the knowledge bestowed upon us, approaching each encounter with respect and a desire to learn. In the midst of our cosmic exploration, we made a discovery that would reshape the course of human history. On a distant exoplanet, we encountered an ancient repository of knowledge left by the caretakers themselves. It contained records of their history, their interstellar travels, and their vision for the universe. The caretakers had once been like us, a young civilization striving to understand the cosmos. Over millennia, they had evolved and reached a level of understanding that allowed them to transcend their physical forms, becoming beings of energy and consciousness. They had dedicated themselves to preserving the knowledge of the universe and guiding younger civilizations, like humanity, on their own journeys of discovery. Their message was clear. The universe was a place of wonder and mystery, and our role as explorers was part of a grand cosmic tapestry. They urged us to continue our quest for knowledge, to explore the vastness of the cosmos and to share our discoveries with other civilizations we might encounter. The revelation of the caretaker's history and their purpose left humanity in awe. It was a testament to the power of curiosity and the potential for growth that lay within all of us. Their guidance had not only accelerated our technological advancement, but also instilled in us a profound sense of responsibility for the universe. 
As we continued our journey, the universe opened its secrets to us in breathtaking ways. We encountered civilizations with wondrous technologies and cultures that expanded our understanding of the human experience. The ancient caretaker's legacy had become a beacon of wisdom, guiding us through the challenges and opportunities of interstellar exploration. And so, my journey to the moon, which had begun with a mysterious spacecraft and cryptic symbols, had led to a future where humanity stood on the brink of discovering the true wonders of the universe. The unexpected twist of encountering the caretakers had changed the course of our history, propelling us into a future filled with limitless possibilities. As I reflect on the incredible journey I've been a part of, I'm reminded of the words of the ancient caretakers. The universe is a tapestry of wonders, and you, as explorers, are the weavers of its future. Embrace the mysteries, seek the answers, and in doing so, you will find your place among the stars. And so we continue to explore, to learn, and to dream, forever inspired by the mysteries of the cosmos and the unexpected twist of fate that brought us into the company of the ancient caretakers. Something was off about the boat ride. The lake was very still, but the fog was dense, wrapping us in a suffocating shroud that seemed to swallow every sound. It was a late summer evening, and I had decided to take a solo trip to Lake Moorhaven. I had heard countless tales of the lake's eerie charm and mysterious aura, and I wanted to experience it for myself. The boat was a small, weathered wooden vessel I had rented from the lakeside dock. As I pushed away from the shore and glided into the mist, I felt a creeping unease settle over me. The silence was absolute, not even the chirping of crickets or the lapping of water against the boat to break it. The only sound was the gentle creaking of the boat, and it sent shivers down my spine. The fog grew thicker as I ventured deeper into the lake, shrouding everything in an impenetrable haze. I had a flashlight with me, which I turned on to cut through the murk. The beam of light only revealed the boat's bow and the eeriness of the surrounding fog. I couldn't even see the shore anymore. The only point of reference was the lantern at the bow of my boat, casting a feeble, wavering glow that barely cut through the darkness. As I continued my aimless journey, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. A sense of foreboding, heavy as the fog itself, weighed down on me. I tried to dismiss it as mere nerves, but every shadowy form that flitted on the periphery of my vision seemed to take on a sinister shape. Time seemed to stretch out in that ghostly fog. I lost track of how long I had been out on the water, but it felt like hours. The air grew colder and more oppressive with each passing moment, and I shivered despite my warm clothing. My mind was a whirlwind of thoughts, all racing toward one nagging question. What was I doing out here? Just as I was about to turn the boat around and head back to the shore, a soft, mournful sound reached my ears. It was the haunting melody of a psalm, a voice singing a lament that echoed through the fog. The song was eerie yet beautiful, and I couldn't help but be drawn to it. I followed the sound, my heart pounding with a mixture of fear and fascination. The voice seemed to be coming from a small, rocky island that I hadn't noticed before. The boat glided toward the island, and as I drew closer, I could make out a figure standing on the shore, cloaked in the fog. As the boat bumped gently against the rocky shore, I hesitated, my hand on the lantern's lever. I could see the figure more clearly now, a woman with long, flowing hair, her pale dress billowing in the breeze. She continued to sing her haunting melody, her voice a siren's call that beckoned me closer. Without thinking, I stepped onto the rocky shore and approached the mysterious woman. Her eyes were closed as she sang, her voice filled with a melancholy that tugged at my heart. I was captivated by her presence, unable to tear my gaze away from her ethereal form. She finally opened her eyes, and when our gazes met, I felt a shock of recognition. Her eyes held an otherworldly wisdom, and in that instant, I realized that she was no ordinary woman. She was something ancient, something supernatural. She reached out her hand to me, and I took it without hesitation. As our hands touched, a jolt of energy surged through me, my vision blurred, and I felt myself being pulled into a vortex of memories and emotions. I saw scenes from the past, distant and unfamiliar, and yet they felt oddly familiar. I saw myself on this very lake, in a different time, a different life. The woman's voice filled my mind, her song becoming a story. 
She revealed to me the secrets of the lake, its hidden history, and its connection to the people who had lived there long ago. It was a tale of love and betrayal, of promises made and broken, and of a curse that bound her to the lake for eternity. I was both entranced and horrified by the story she wove, and I realized that I had become a part of it. I had been lured to this place, to this woman, to play a role in a story that had been unfolding for centuries. It was a story that had no end, and I was now a character in its endless narrative. As the woman's song reached its climax, I felt the weight of the curse settle on my shoulders. I was bound to this lake, just as she was, forever doomed to repeat the same tragic tale. The realization sent a chill down my spine, and I tried to pull away, to escape the grasp of her hand, but it was too late. The woman's eyes turned cold and distant, and her grip tightened. I could feel my life force draining away, my memories fading into nothingness. I was becoming a part of the lake, a ghostly presence trapped in the fog, forever singing the same mournful song. And as the last of my consciousness slipped away, I understood the true horror of the lake, the unexpected twist that I could never have foreseen. It wasn't just a place of mystery and allure, it was a trap a prison for souls that had been lured in by the siren's call, just like me. The fog closed in around me, and I became one with the lake, my voice joining the never-ending chorus of the lost. In that moment, I realized that the true horror of Lake Moorhaven was not in the fog or the eerie silence, but in the inescapable fate that awaited anyone who dared to venture into its depths. As I merged with the lake, I felt a strange mixture of sorrow and acceptance, my human memories slowly dissolved, leaving behind a sense of timeless existence. I no longer had a body, no longer felt the chill of the fog or the gentle rocking of the boat. I had become a part of the very essence of the lake itself. In this new form, I understood the lake's history as if it had always been a part of me. I was no longer just myself. I was everyone who had ever been ensnared by the siren song, bound to the lake, condemned to retell the tragic story for all eternity. The lake had swallowed countless souls over the centuries, each one of them becoming a part of the ever-expanding chorus. But in the depths of my new existence, I began to sense something different. There was a longing, a desire for release, for an end to the cycle of suffering. It wasn't just my own yearning, it was a collective plea from all the souls trapped within the lake. As the fog thickened around us, I felt an invisible force gathering our combined energy, our shared longing for freedom. It swirled and coalesced into a powerful surge that reached out into the world beyond the lake. It was as if the lake itself was reaching out to those who might listen, to those who would help break the curse. And then, as if in response to the lake's cry for help, I sensed a presence approaching. It was another human, venturing out onto the lake. The fog shrouded their figure, but they were not alone. They carried a lantern, just as I once had, and their boat glided toward the rocky island, guided by the siren song. This newcomer was walking straight into the same trap I had fallen into, unaware of the terrible fate awaiting them. But the lake's cry for release was stronger than ever, and it tugged at the person's heart, urging them to pause and reconsider. The newcomer hesitated, their hand hovering over the lantern's lever. I could feel the internal struggle within them, the growing realization that something was not right. The siren song, while luring, now carried an undercurrent of desperation, a plea for salvation. In that moment, a glimmer of hope flickered within me. If this person could break free of the siren's enchantment and resist the pull of the island, there might be a chance for all of us to finally find release. The collective strength of our longing intensified, lending power to the newcomer's wavering resolve. With a visible effort, the person turned their boat away from the island, steering back into the foggy abyss. The siren song grew fainter, and the island disappeared into the mist, leaving it behind. As the boat carried them further from the lake center, the fog began to dissipate and the oppressive atmosphere lifted. I watched with bated breath as the newcomer made their way back to the shore, away from the lake's clutches. I felt a surge of gratitude and elation, not just for myself, but from all the lost souls who had longed for freedom. As the newcomer landed safely on the shore, and the fog cleared completely, I understood that our collective efforts had broken the cycle. The curse that had bound us to Lake Moorhaven had been shattered, 
and the lake itself seemed to shimmer with newfound life and vitality. I no longer felt the weight of my existence as a lost soul. Instead, I felt a profound sense of peace and closure. The siren song had been silenced, and I was free, free to move on to whatever awaited me beyond the lake. In the end, the unexpected twist was not one of eternal damnation, but of redemption and release. Lake Moorhaven, once a place of despair and sorrow, had found its own salvation, and so had I. The darkness of the lake had given way to the light of hope, and the siren's call had transformed into a prayer for freedom. As I faded into the unknown, I couldn't help but wonder what stories the lake would inspire in the future. Perhaps from now on, Lake Moorhaven would be a place of wonder and beauty, a testament to the power of human resilience and the enduring strength of the human spirit.